Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at neurons and synaptic transmission. So first of all you need to know what a neuron is and they are nervous cells that pass messages around your brain and uh, like to and from the central nervous system. And what they do is they send electrical impulses along the neuron and these are called action potentials and the electrical impulse basically pushes the message along the neuron so it has the energy to move along it and pass the message along. And neurons can be positively or negatively charged. They're negatively charged when they are sat in the neuro, like they're sat there, they're not doing anything, they're not passing any messages along. And they are positively charged when they are sending messages along. So you need to know that there are three types of neurons. Um, you need to know what they are and the features of them. So first of all, we've got motor neurons and these are the ones that control our muscles. So they're the ones that say your arm, you need to move and like you can move and bend your arm. And these ones have short dendrites and long axons. And the short dendrites are the little tentacles at the end of the neuron and the long axons are the bit in the middle that passes the, the contains and passes the message along. The relay neuron is basically the connecting neurons between the motor and the sensory, so they allow communication between motor neurons and sensory neurons. So when impulses reach the brain they're translated into different sensations and they are found so within the brain and the spinal cord only. So these relay neurons are only within the brain and the spinal cord. And these have short dendrites and short axons. So the sensory neuron is the last one and they carry messages from sensory receptors in like or anywhere around your body to the central nervous system so through up to your brain and spinal cord. Sometimes they just go up to your spinal cord and that's known as a reflex arc when we just need to quickly make it like we're not even making a decision we're just doing something to avoid danger so if you touch like a hot plate and you're going to burn yourself it's a quick reflex action to move away from the hot plate so to take your hand away from it and drop the plate but it also does carry other other sensory messages like if you were just like um, holding a pen in your hand like it, your hand can feel that there is a pen there and these ones have long dendrites and short axons so you need to know all the different types of neurons that you can have, but you also need to know what each of the features are of a neuron. So what, what it looks like and what each part of a neuron is. And the first part is the terminal button or axon. And these are the tiny little bits at the end of a dendrite, which is these long bits here, that are holding the neurotransmitters, the messages, which are going to be passed out into the gap between the neurons. The next thing we've got is the myelin sheath. So that is this circular bit around here. And that myelin sheath is like a really fatty layer and it helps protect the neuron and make sure that the memory um, or the information is like held and not broken. So you'll have like um, the more you remember something or are able to recall it or the more you practice it the fattier your myelin sheath will get so once you like when you're learning to ride a bike it is really hard at first but the more we practice it the more our myelin sheath develops so that fatty layer and that helps us to remember it for our whole lives and then we've got an axon which is this whole long bit along here and that is the bit that carries the message or the action potential so the energy all the way down to the ends of these dendrites so that you can throw the message out into the synaptic gap. Four we've got the cell body so this is the control center of the neuron it tells the neuron what to do and then we've got specifically the nucleus so that's this section here and that contains any genetic information of the cell then we've got the dendrites on either end and the dendrites carry the nerve impulses from the neighboring neurons so they like pick the message up from another neuron and pass it along to the other end of the neuron and finally, we've got the nodes of Ranvir, and the nodes of Ranvir are the gaps here between the myelin sheaths. And these bits are help, like by having the gaps, it helps to speed up the process of transmission, so speed up the pro passing the message along. So as I said, you need to know all the features that are there from one to seven, and you need to be able to label these on a diagram as well as explain what they are. So it might be worth labeling a diagram with this, with this information in it. 
You also need to know the direction of conduction, so it always goes from the right hand side here where the dendrites are and the nucleus are to um, the end where the terminal buttons are. So there are three um, different neurons as we said and they all look slightly different but they all contain the same elements okay um, some of them have more than the others but they're all the same so we see we've got a myelin sheaf here we've got a cell body here we've got um, the nodes of Ramvir here etc so all the information is still there but it's just located in different places or it doesn't include some of it like this one doesn't have a myelin sheaf because it's just passing messages along. It doesn't matter if it, um, it doesn't, it's just passing messages along and not keeping it there forever. So you need to know that how a message is passed along and how all of these three neurons can interact with each other. So we might have a stimulus like your phone and the sensory receptors might hear your phone ring or see that your phone has like light, lit up. And then the sensory neuron will send that message for, like from what we see or from what we hear um, and it will pass it on to the relay neurons and the relay neurons job is simply to pass it on again to the motor neuron for you to go I need to pick up my phone and have a look at what the message is or who's calling me and that will lead to the effector or the muscle literally picking up my phone and then me being able to respond to it and go hello who's that? So make sure you know how these all work together. Sometimes we don't use all of them, but we can use all of them, as I've just given you an example of. Sometimes we might only use one or two of them. For example, when the sensory neuron and the relay neuron, um, we might use in terms of the reflex arc. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So we need to know how the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system follow along from the like or work with the different types of neuron. So an example, a nice easy example here is about when a hammer hits the knee. We sometimes do this to check um, our knee jerk reactions. So people would should be able to move their knee really quickly when a hammer hits, like without meaning to. It just does it anyway. So a stimulus such as a hammer hits a knee and this is detected by the sense organs in the peripheral nervous system. So in this case, it will be like where our knee is, we have like some senses, like sensory receptors that can feel the hammer hitting our knee. And this sends messages to the sensory neurons that are near there and that passes the messages all the way up to the central nervous system. And the central nervous system has loads of relay neurons in it and these just quickly fire and pass the message on to the motor neurons and this carries the message all the way back down to the effector or the muscle and in this case the muscle is the like muscle in our knee and that causes us to move our knee and like it to like fly upwards okay um, and all of this happens like instant almost instantaneously and in, like in our respects, like that's what we'll feel like it's really, really quick. But that's all of your body interacting with each other from your knee all the way back up to your brain and then all the way back down to your knee again for your knee to respond to it. So it's happening a really quick process. It's not a slow one. So for this is a perfect example of where you might get the three neurons interacting and you'll need to be able to explain them. So you should be able to say that A is the relay neuron because it's the one that's going up into the brain. You should then be able to say that B is the sensory neuron passing the information up to the relay neuron and C is the motor neuron passing it back down to our arm to tell us that we need to move our arm away because we have like we're going to touch some we're touching something that's really hot. Okay, so now you know the features of a neuron, you also need to know how each neuron works and how that passes messages along. And that is called synaptic transmission. And it's the idea that we have several, like there are hundreds of billions of neurons in our brain and they all have to pass information along to the next neuron in order to pass the message on. Um, and each neuron is separated from the next by a tiny little gap, which is called the synapse. And this is where the information that was originally an electrical impulse, so like it was electrical all the way down to the neuron, now turns into a chemical process where the message is, is in chemical form and passes along the gap. As soon as it gets to the end, it is then changed back into an electrical impulse. So as soon as it gets to the next neuron, it's, part, it's changing it back into an electrical impulse. So 
this is the end of a neuron where our receptors are. Um, sorry, where our terminal buttons are. And if we look at it in more detail, we've got several different things. We've got these bubbles here, which are vesicles, and they are the things that hold um, the neurotransmitters. They hold the messages, the chemical messages that are going to be passed on through the synaptic gap. So you can see there's like little dots in here. They're one and they're the neurotransmitters, which are messages. And these messages, when there is enough energy, will be released into the synapse, which is this gap here between this neuron and this neuron here. So the messages are passed along into the synaptic gap. And then we have the receptors on the other side. So these are all the, these bits are the little receptors and they're like little jigsaw pieces and they only fit certain types of neuro, neurotransmitters. You can see that this neurotransmitter will fit into this receptor site. And that means that the message is passed along and scooped up or taken up by the next neuron. And this means that message is passed along. If you imagine the neurotransmitters are the message, like if you'd written down a message and you wanted to pass it along, that is what hap is happening here. And then this whole bit, the end of it is the dendrite. So like there is, we've got receptors on the ends of dendrites, which if we went back to our original diagram, you'll see that's what's happening here. So to sum it up, synaptic transmission is when an action potential or the energy reaches the end of the presynaptic terminal, so like the original neuron, and it triggers the neurotransmitters in the vesicle, in these round bits, to be released into the synaptic gap. They then diffuse across the synaptic gap to the other side where they are scooped up by the receptors. I always imagine these are like hungry hippos, these receptors, and they're like scooping up the like hippos that are in the middle if you've ever played that game and this allows for them to be absorbed into this dendrite and therefore the message is then passed along as an electrical um, signal now the last thing that happens is that not all of these messages are always passed along so sometimes they are scooped back up or re-uptaken by the original neuron so you can see another process of it happening here. Lots of vesicles, information being transferred across, the neurotransmitters being referred across, it being caught, scooped up by the new neuro, um, by the dendrite on the other side, the receptors on the other side, and then some of it is reuptaken back into the original neuron. So the same neuron can send different messages, like to different things, so it can tell us to both pick up our like pick something up, like pick up our phone, but it can also tell us to do something um, else like pick up our phone or like speak to someone or whatever. And that is because they can be inhibitory or excitatory. And there's so neurotransmitters specifically, the little dots, the messages are the ones that can be inhibitory or excitatory. And so certain neurotransmitters or certain messages can switch on um, the neuron and some of them can switch off the neuron so you might have heard of serotonin for example and it's been related to happiness and noradrenaline is adrenaline but for the brain so you might have heard of that before as well so an excitatory neuron or an excitation of the postsynaptic membrane is when the message is more likely to be fired so it's excited there's loads of energy and the message is passed along Neuro some neurotransmitters are inhibitory however and these are the ones that slow the message down I mean that's less likely for the message to fire because we sometimes don't want too much of one uh, message in our brain so if it's both synaptic and oh, sorry, if it's both excitatory and inhibitory then what happens is that nothing will really happen or it it does it's got to be equal so like if the net effect of the postsynaptic neuron is inhibitory it'd be less likely to fire so if there's more inhibitory than excitatory it's less likely to fire and if there's more excitatory than inhibitory it's more likely to fire so hopefully that was helpful have a look back at those videos that are in the that are embedded in here as well and let me know if you have any questions